Hello and welcome to Designer How. Today we'll be showing you how to take a video filmed in portrait and expand it into widescreen using generative fill. Before we begin, I'd like to announce we've just hit a thousand subscribers and we're truly blown away. Thank you all for your incredible support and for joining us on this journey. Here's to many more videos and milestones together. So once again, thank you. You guys are awesome and let's get into the video. In your new project, drag your portrait video onto the timeline. Make sure the video you use has no camera movement and that there are no moving elements crossing the borders of the frame. Be sure to have your setting at 1080p or 2160p. To check this, you can go to Sequence, Sequence Settings, and just make sure the frame size is either 1920 by 1080 or 3840 by 2160. Black bars should be visible on both sides of the clip. Now go and click the camera icon for export frame, and if you want, hit Browse to save the snapshot in another directory, as long as it's easily accessible. In Photoshop, head to File, select Place Embedded and open the frame we've just exported. We now have our frame ready and lined up in Photoshop. Double-click the background layer, press OK or Enter, and press the Delete button to remove the layer. Now we'll begin filling the empty spaces with the generative fill. Select the rectangular marquee tool and make a square selection in the middle of your footage. Make sure to leave some margin on the edges. Then head to Select and hit Invert. We now have selected the area to transform. Now in the generative fill bar, I'll type the prompt Neon Disco. For every prompt, the program gives us three results. In case you don't like the results, you can just try other prompts or regenerate the same prompt until you get something that works. Though in my experience, it generally works pretty well. I'll go with this one, it suits the mood best, I think. Go and click the eye icon to disable visibility on our original layer. Then go to File, Export and save it as a PNG file somewhere easily accessible. Back in Premiere, drag the PNG file we just saved onto the timeline. Right-click the clip and hit Scale to Frame Size. Match the new clip to the source and let's see what we got. Little bit of a line there, and the shadow cuts off in the very bottom. Learn from my mistake, guys. Don't use footage with moving parts transcending its borders. This is still salvageable though, and I will show you how. First, we'll take care of that separating line by going to Window and selecting Lumetri. In the panel that opens, we'll head into Curves and play around with the RGB curves. We'll just want to make a subtle adjustment here and make the colors grade evenly. That looks pretty good to me. For the shadow problem, we're going to apply a solution literally as old as time itself, the zoom. Select both clips on the timeline, right-click them, select Nest, and hit OK. First, we'll scale the clip a little bit to hide the cutoff, but we won't stop there. We'll give the entire thing a subtle zoom to make the footage feel more alive and integrated. By adding some zoom, we'll fool our brains into thinking it is all the same footage we're looking at, and not just components. With that done, we'll add some more touches to fool our brains even further. Neon tubes always pulsate softly. It may not be immediately noticeable, but our brains pick up on it. I want to make the entire thing pulsate instead of just the center. So let's duplicate this nested clip, then go to Effects and type Luma. Drag the Luma key effect onto the top layer, and make sure to disable the visibility on the bottom layer by clicking the eye icon so we can see the effect. Under Luma key, set cutoff to about where you can still see the intended subjects of our pulse effect. In this case, that's around 44. Now under effects type Gaussian and drag the Gaussian blur effect onto the top layer. Make sure the visibility on the bottom layer is back on by clicking the eye icon again. Then under Gaussian blur, create a keyframe for blurriness on the first frame. Now scrub forward a bit and we'll see that by ramping up the blurriness, the neon intensity increases as well. We'll set this keyframe to about 64. Now all we have to do is hold Alt and click and drag these frames to copy them one after the other to create a sequence of the 64 values and the null values alternating each other. Once done, select all keyframes, right-click them, and select Bezier to smoothen the motion. As a final touch, I nested the clips once more and added some real smart motion blur. Though it's not really essential, I just did it for the heck of it. And this is what we have. 
a seamless landscape view derived from a single portrait video. I will leave the link to the stock vid in the description as practice material. Anyways, that was it for today, guys. Thanks for sticking with us and getting us to a thousand subs. We appreciate you. Like and subscribe for more vids like this if you weren't already. And as always, catch you all on the next one.